The number one cause of divorce, according to my next guest, is not adultery or finances or disagreement. It's apathy, a lack of intentional emotional, physical, and mental investment in the relationship. Pastor Kevin A. Thompson from Western Arkansas meets with hundreds of couples for premarital counseling all the way to serious betrayals. Often, a husband and wife forget in their marriage they had three distinct roles, friend, partner, and lover. Kevin is married to Jenny. They have two, I imagine, wonderful children, right? Absolutely. And uh, welcome to 100 Huntley well, thank Street. You. Thanks for having me. Okay, lots of books on relationships, marriage. Kevin, why did you write this one? Yeah, for, for me, this is almost like a job description of what it means to be a spouse. You know, I got married and uh, the first decade, what is it that you're supposed to do? I wanted to be a good husband. I wanted to have a healthy marriage, but what is it that you're actually supposed to do? Because marriage takes on a different form and look for so many people. But what are the base value of what my wife actually needed from me? And I think it comes down to these three basic principles, that if you can be a friend, if you can be a partner and be a lover, that stabilizes your marriage to where you can handle everything else. And if you have two of the three, that's not good enough. I think two of the three is dangerous. I, I think it's almost like a three-legged stool, that if you have two of the three, it can balance for a while, but eventually it's going to topple, topple over. And so whenever I think about these concepts, I, I think a friend means you always have somebody by your side, hand in hand, walking mm -hmm. through life. A partner means you always have somebody who has your back, who's going to be there for you. And then a lover is this idea of you have somebody that sees you intimately and yet loves you anyway. You think about those three things. Mm -hmm. If you have somebody by your side, somebody that has your back, and somebody that loves you no matter what, you're going to have a healthy relationship. Well, and hopefully after 34 years, uh, I've discovered that with my wife, Arlene. Now, I want to talk about the friend part first. Yeah. Um, can your wife be your best friend? Yes, I think, I think your spouse should be your best friend, not your only friend. By no means. I see some couples who, who take it too far and think our spouse has to be my only friend. And then you're expecting your spouse to do something they can never do. But I think your spouse absolutely should be your first person. The first person you turn to in good times and bad times. And, and, and I, think, I think relationships begin that way. I think a first date is a friendship question. Do I like this person? Can I spend time with this person? So relationships begin with friendship. But I think over time, if we're not very careful, if we become apathetic toward that, the busyness of life takes over and we lose that friendship. So absolutely, if, you're, if your spouse is not your best friend, I think there's room for growth within your relationship. So I remember going to a men's meeting, and, and I understand it because there can be these pendulum swings that you can have is a very enthusiastic preacher saying, guys, your wife should not be your best friend. You need male friends. I've heard you kind of say that because there's different roles that men, you know, guys in my life, guys in your life that you, you know, you do things differently than your wife. But it is important, though, to have that, that deep friendship. Oh, absolutely. And there's no doubt that men need other male friends. Women need other women friends. I don't doubt that. You need, you need a plethora of friendships. I don't doubt that at all. But here's my question. If, if you have great success right now, who's the first person you call? If a tragedy hits you in your life, who's the first person you call? If that is not your spouse, your marriage is unhealthy. Now, it doesn't mean it's bad, but it means there's areas of improvement where you can develop that. But there is no question in a healthy marriage, your first person, your best friend is your spouse. What would you say, though, to the couples? And I know that there are many watching this program today in various parts of relationship, all the way from great to struggling and maybe even on their way to divorce. Can you rekindle a friendship? Or what if it's never really been there? Oh, yeah. I think you can de definitely develop it. There's no doubt. It's easier to rekindle it because you have that history that's there. You know that it can be. Uh, but even if you've never experienced that before, I think you can develop a friendship in a very meaningful way. Friendship tends to come down to this idea of shared experience. And, and within marriage, we have that opportunity to do that. So I think if you've read the book, research, do some time, make some effort, the, the very easiest prediction I can have for a couple, if they will regularly take a walk together, just on, on a weekly basis, just take a walk. You're going to be spending time together. You're going to be talking with one another. And then in that moment, you, I think you can develop a deeper friendship just by that one simple action. Well, I go on lots of walks with my wife, and we talk a lot of a lot of things. I was telling you before we came on the program, I recently did a wedding. I won't uh, mention the couple, but uh, I did say in the ceremony, I actually quoted you, yeah. so you've been quoted yes. in an Egyptian wedding. Uh, the number one cause of divorce isn't adultery or finances or disagreement. It's apathy, a lack of intentional, emotional, physical, and mental investment in the relationship. So friendship... There has to be that investment. Has to be intention. You, you have to do it. I think early on you don't have to have intention. It just happens. But when the pressures of life begin to kick in, when the partnership really becomes a central role to your relationship and you're raising kids, you got businesses, you got to pay bills, when all the pressure hits, it's so easy to push that friendship aside. And then the next thing you know, you just, you don't, I don't think you run from your spouse. I think you tend to drift 
from them. Mm -hmm. And so you have to use intention to make sure that you stay connected with one another, especially in the busiest seasons of life, of raising kids, of raising teenagers, of having businesses, things like that. If you don't have intention in that moment, your friendship will begin to drift away. Okay, we got into friendship. We're going to talk about partners and lovers. Kevin A. Thompson, pastor from Arkansas. Arkansas, yeah. that's right. And we'll be right back with more of 100 Huntley Street right after this.